Hey folks, Mr. Justin here with Seagrow Weapon Miniatures, and today I have a two-minute tutorial for you in which we are going to use a pigment wash to weather up an X-Wing model. Let's get going on that. The tools I need today, I have my palette knife. Uh, you don't have to have a palette knife to get pigments out of the pots, but it helps. You can still use just a square head brush or filbert, something like that, to scoop it into the cup you're going to use. Some Q-tips that I'm going to use to remove the pigment as we go. Obviously the two pigments I'm going to use, in this case I've got exhaust black and violet. My X-Wing model, and I need some isopropyl rubbing alcohol. In this case, I've got some in my uh, airbrush cleaning kit here. I'm going to turn on the lights. Let that wash out for a sec. Once it comes back, we'll be going. Give you a quick look at the difference between the two models. Again, this is just quick and dirty weathering. What I wanted was some carbon streaking on my vehicle. So here's a before and after, side by side. Really simple. What I'm going to do to start You need very little pigment, so what I'm going to do to start is get just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of my black pigment here. You can see how little is right there on my palette knife. A little bit more than that. And a little bit of my violet. Got a paper towel here to clean things up as I go. I have my isopropyl. And I am just going to make a wash. Now, I'm using isopropyl because it's speedy. Uh, remember that isopropyl will strip acrylic paint very quickly, very readily, very easily. So be careful with it. Uh, in the case of my X-Wing model here, I don't have to worry about the acrylic paint so much. So not a big deal. Uh, but it does dry nice and quick, which is why I'm using it here. You can use water, uh, which will be completely safe on any of the mediums that you're working with. You still need to be gentle anytime you're putting a wash over the top of this because we're going to rub it away. This is called a subtractive method, meaning that we are going to remove pigment from our model after we add it. So in this case, I've got my pigment wash all made up. You can see it's uh, a little thinner than a slurry would be, um, but not so thick that I get pigment every time, or a heavy dose of pigment every time. You can check it against the side of your cup just by dabbing it there, see how it runs off, whether or not you want it a little thinner or you've got too much pigment loaded up on your brush. And I am just going to wash this over my model in the areas I want my pigment to be uh, when it dries. Kind of stippling it on, combination of stippling and rubbing. I'm not mixing the wash too well because I want the uh, purple or the violet and the black to uh, separate a bit. I'll come around to the underside of the vehicle. It's a little weird if I didn't. I can do the same thing on the uh, parts of a tank or car or other vehicle if I wanted to uh, create an old dust effect. That's effectively what we're doing here is a subtractive method to get a dust effect. Only in this case, instead of dust, we've got some carbon from flying around in space. All of our space explosions. All right. So I've got a nice heavy dose of the pigment on here. Again, I'm going to be taking this off. I'm going to be removing this. It's a subtractive method. So I will clean out the brush. I am going to go off camera for one second to hit this with my handy dandy blow dryer. Not always the best idea to hit uh, pigments with the blow dryer either, uh, particularly with a wash because it's going to move them around. But again, we're doing a subtractive method, not the end of the world in this case. I'm going to take another cup. I'm going to put just some isopropyl in it. Again, if I was using water, I'd use water. What I don't want to use is the pigment fixer because this is a subtractive method, meaning that I am removing pigment. If I'd use the pigment fixer, chances are good I'm not going to get any pigment off without having to really, really scrub at this, and I don't want to do that. So I've taken my Q-tip, I've gotten the end wet, dabbed off some of that excess right there on my paper towel. I am just going to gently streak this over the surface. You see how it's removing some of that pigment right there? You can see it coming off right there on the Q-tip. Take off too much, no problem. Come back, add a bit more. It's a nice thing about doing the uh, subtractive method is you can always adjust as you go. So here I am, I'll do it on one side first entirely so you can see it. 
make sure I'm on screen here for you. So here's one side cleaned up, stripped off like that. You can see where I've removed some of the pigments. You can see how heavy it is on this side compared to that. Just get some of this off over here. Gentle, gentle, gentle. Clean the sides. Obviously, if I want to go heavier, I can add more or simply subtract less. In this case, I am pulling in a, a streaking direction because particularly here on the tail of the A-wing, I would want to have a slight streaking effect. I can also create that streaking effect right here on the top just by pulling gently back. You do the same with your brush. Load my brush up just with the isopropyl, making sure it's reasonably clean. I come in and create some gentle streaks just by pulling back some of that pigment that's already there. So that's it. A quick, easy, and effective way to add some unique touches to your X-Wing models without having to completely repaint them. Uh, I don't know about you, but I haven't had time to get in and completely repaint all of my X-Wing models. So this is a nice way to create a weathered and unique look to your force without having to go super nuts and repaint the whole thing. Any questions, you know where to find me. It's Mr. Justin at Secret Weapon Miniatures, and I'll be back with another two-minute tutorial next time. Thanks so much for watching.